Mr. Paradise? I had not yet heard the sound of Gabriel's horn. What do you mean? The time is not yet ripe for my resurrection. How did you happen to come across that little book of verse? <sighs> Mother and I were hunting antiques in the quarter, and we came across a, a little shop on Bourbon Street, and there was a little tea table in the corner with one leg slightly shorter than the other. And this volume was used to balance the table. It was put under the little short leg and um, mother bought the table and the chauffeur carried it out to the car, but, uh, and the antique dealer must have kicked it out of the way uh, without looking. See, there's something a little pathetic about a, a discarded book. See, I write a little myself. Uh, Poems mostly, <laughs> and uh, I know what it's like to put your your heart on paper and to have the paper lost or forgotten or used to balance a table. Um, uh, uh, so I I looked over, I looked down at the book, and and um, the the title was rubbed off, but and the joke letter was gone, but I saw your name on it. Said Mr. Paradise, Mr. Anthony Paradise. It struck my fancy, so I opened it up and I looked through it. Why, this is a book of verse. I said, this is a book of poems. <laughs> the antique dealer said, is it? I said, where did you get this book? Who is Anthony Paradise? How long has this been lying there? How long have you had this book? He said, God only knows. Books like that never sell. I probably just bought it up with a, book, with a couple book uh, cases back in the day. He said he uses it to start fires with. Um, so I said, I would like to purchase this book. So he said, I said, how much is it? He said, he, great, he raised his hands, a great magnificent gesture. He said, you could have the book for nothing. <laughs> so the chauffeur came out and reminded me that mother was still waiting in the car. So I slipped this book of verse in my pocketbook and Ran off to the next cocktail party. See, God, see, I'm home for holidays, and, and, and I'm home for holidays in college, and, and cocktail parties are just all around, all this, all sorts of things. And, and this, this, this afternoon was unusually uh, dull. This afternoon, and see, I like dullness. See, I like passion and beauty and wonder, and, and a great big fiery storm that sweeps all true realities, and like scraps of ribbon and, and dead leaves. And, and and just when I just when I forgot about this book, someone asked me about Bryn Mawr for the 20th time, so I ran upstairs and I realized that this is exactly what I was looking for. A great big triviality that struck, that just swept all trivialities away like scraps of ribbon and dead leaves. What do you think of that? Are you referring to this book of verse? Yes, yes. This was published 15, 20 years ago. Nobody remembers it. I remember it. I sat up there in that powder room and read it over and over and again and again and great solemn cathedral bells just rang and struck me through and through and mother came upstairs and she said, what on earth is going on? Everyone thinks you ran away from the party. And I said, mother, have you ever heard of Anthony Paradise? Have you ever even heard of Mr. Anthony Paradise? No, she hadn't, and neither did anyone else. So I ran around feverishly, 
looking through libraries and 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 and, 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 and bookstores and and nothing, completely unknown. So I wrote to the firm, and uh, and they in due time they gave me a response, and um, I I ran over here as soon as I could. And in the response, they said, you might be here. And, and, and it, was, it, was, it was said that 10, 15 years ago, you were here. But, so, so I didn't know if you were here. But I, so I just came right over. But, but I was really sick. Well, actually, I faked sick. <laughs> so I didn't have so, so So I faked sick, and I wrote my letters. But she didn't answer. But I'm not going to ask why. I, you don't have to tell me. I'm not going to wonder why. <laughs> um, so I just, at that time, I refused to be snubbed. And I refused to let you not be discovered. So here I am, and here I am, Mr. Paradise, and here you are. Here you are, and here I am. Yes, indeed. What are you intending to do about it? Can't you guess, Mr. Paradise? Don't you know? I'm here to bring you back to the world. Bring me back to the world? Yes, the stupid, blind, negligent world that lets you slip away. Suppose I don't want to go back. Suppose I wish to stay in my oblivion. <laughs> you can't, Mr. Paradise. You can't. I refuse it. I've already set the ball in motion. <laughs> <laughs> then stop it quickly, please. No, I've already written to very influential people in the, that I know in the East. I've already created a great big deal about you, Mr. Paradise. When I leave here, you're leaving here with me. <laughs> no. No. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> You're going to give readings and lectures. Readings to whom? Clubs, colleges, societies of poets. Lectures on what? Beauty, art, poetry. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> Haven't you been reading the newspapers lately? Why? The world is more interested in gunpowder. Poetry cannot compete with the sounds of bursting shells. Now is the time for the discovery of new weapons and destruction, not for the resurrection of old, neglected poets. Even if I wish to be resurrected, I have not yet heard the sound of Gabriel's horn. The surest and cruelest way to destroy Anthony Paradise is to exhibit the man, Jonathan Jones, or what remains of the man. Don't you see that? What a grisly spectacle I would be up on a college platform. Look at me! I'm, you're not blind. What do you see? The way you look doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes it does. Maybe not to you, because you are young and generous. No, 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 no. No, the time is not ripe. Keep the book. Remember my name and keep your eyes on the obituaries. When you see the name of Jonathan Jones, come back and look up the name of Mr. Anthony Paradise. That will be his time when Jones is dead. Jones is a living contradiction of paradise. Paradise cannot draw breath until Jones has stopped breathing. Take my word for that and be satisfied. Can't you be Mr. Paradise now? No. Again? No. No, it's too late. I'm too old. The only thing that can possibly save my reputation now is death. Go back to school, little girl. There's an end to everything, even the supply of gunpowder. When they're exhausted, people will look under the broken table legs again and find little books of verse. And by that time, Jonathan Jones will be well out of the way and the world will be full of warmth and 
sunshine. Wind will blow on the tops of green hills. Children will dig in the sand of the sunny beaches. Guns explode, destroy, and are destroyed. But this, this little book of songs, however little and unimportant they may be, will sing forever. Life is to go upward and death is to go downwards. Life, my dear, not death, life, life. I defy them to stop it forever, not with all their weapons, not with all their destruction. Life will endure for eternity. And one day, we will all join together and sing. And the world will be full of our singing. Is that your chauffeur? Yes. Then you better go. Mr. Paradise? Yes. Maybe you're right. I'll do what you say and I'll keep the book and remember your name. And keep your eyes on the obituaries. <laughs> yes. And when the time comes, you can depend on me. Thank you, my dear. I shall depend on you. Thank you. And Mr. Paradise, won't you kiss me goodbye? Mm-hmm. 